Hi guys, happy Tuesday. Uh, again, just waiting for things to load up before I jump in. All right, so it's Tuesday today. Hope you're having a good day. Um, just jumping on here like I do every week to help give you uh, tips and uh, help with like your social media strategy or your content strategy, things of that nature, especially if you're a bookkeeper. So anyways, so today I'm gonna talk about um, the wrong questions you're probably asking about your social media strategy. And I'm doing this today because I hear these all the time. And it's not hard to reframe how you think about stuff. I just don't want you getting caught up in, in details that really don't matter to your strategy, to your business, to your success. There are certain things that I know that some of my clients get wrapped up in and focused on that doesn't actually help them, you know, quote unquote, move the needle. So I want to talk about the, you know, five questions that I hear the wrong ones. And I want to give you the right ones to replace them with to help um, help stuff with your business, right? Anyways, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Number one, I hear this one a lot. The first wrong question I hear is, what time of day to the minute should I be posting? I hear this a lot. People think that if they post at 2.37 on Tuesday, then all of a sudden they'll get this like flood of clients and that's the magic time to post for their business. <laughs> um, now, if you Google this, you will find lots of answers. If you Google, when do I, when should I, you know, schedule my posts for, you will find answers from Sprout Social, from Hootsuite. And in general, they can give you a good guideline as far as you know, like posting towards certain hours, but they like to contradict each other. And then you're like, what do I do? I, I don't want you to worry about posting things at the perfect time. There really isn't. There's a general thing that I'll get to in a second, but don't worry about, Posting at 237 or all fall apart. It's not how social media works. And honestly, think about it. Um, different businesses have different markets, different demographics, different needs. For example, um, I need to make sure that I'm posting at a certain time of day where my clients are awake. I would love to post first thing in the morning and like check that off of my list. But when I'm awake, all of my clients are asleep and my posts will just fall right to the ground without any engagement because all my clients are not awake to see it. You see what I mean? Um, so I have a different best time to send to send my posts than maybe someone else does. Um, so here's the thing. I don't want you to worry about posting at exactly 2.37 on a Thursday. Over time, after you get started, after you have a pattern, you can look back. Like for example, your Facebook page, if you're posting through there, you'll be able to access metrics really easily. And over time, you can be like, okay, when I post on Monday morning, that does better than when I post on Wednesday afternoon. So I'm gonna make sure I post more on Monday morning. But again, this is a secondary strategy. It's not as important. The things you need to focus on, in the, especially in the beginning, but also going forward, is instead of worrying about getting things posted at the exact right minute, make sure that you're posting consistently and make sure that you're engaging. That's way more important. There's no magic minute to post correctly at. Um, consistency and engagement is really the best thing you can do. So here's the wrong question. What time of day to the minute should I be posting? A better question should be, are my clients awake and active for the next three to five hours? There is a trailing off point when it comes to Facebook feeds for that. Are my clients awake and active for the next three to five hours for when you're posting? And do I have the ability to reply to them in that time frame? So that's another thing I have to do is that um, I have to time my posts in a way where I can interact with them. I can comment back and reply. Um, so I have to post them early enough in my day that I can reply after I share it, but also late enough in the day that my clients are awake who are in the US and seven or 10 hours ahead of me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that's the better question. Are my clients awake and active? And do I have the availability to reply to them in that time frame? You're focusing on them, you're focusing on being consistent and engaged. That's more important than a specific hand on the, the clock, right? All right, so that's the first wrong question I hear all the time. So again, just focus on being consistent and being available. So two, I get this one a lot as well. How long should my posts be? What's the exact word count? Again. If you Google this, you'll find answers on this too. For example, a pretty consistent feedback I see actually is for Facebook, 40 to 80 characters, so that's like letters and spaces, are the best markers for engagement. That's, that's what gets the most engagement, that's what gets people to interact with you the most. But here's the thing, 
Um, I see Facebook posts in that link, they flop all the time. And I also see these rules broken and these much longer posts do really well from people that I follow, that mentored me, that I admire, that do very well in their businesses. And you guys know I have this, um, the membership for the content. My posts in there, they're usually between 150 to 350 words, not characters, words. So I make these long posts and I've had two clients who have doubled their client base and another who added four clients in the first month of using it. So once again, it's focusing on the wrong thing. People think that if I get my word count in the exact right you know, spectrum, kind of like if I post at just the right minute, that's what'll do it. That'll be the magic. And it's, well, it's not quite that. Um, it's more about the message. So for example, the thing that these good messages have in common, because once again, some people can put, you know, share something within that like 80 character magic limit and it works. And some people share in that length and it doesn't. That's because it's the content. It's the message that matters more. So what you need to focus on is not so much the length, as long as you fit it in the platform, because, you know, there are word count limitations, you know, especially for LinkedIn and stuff like that. As long as you're inside the length that you're allowed to share it, the message is more important than the word character count. It's just how it is. So the wrong question, again, is how, what is the exact word count my post should be? It's not the right question. The better question is, in a clear way, does this content help me connect with, give value to, or explain my value to my customers? I'm gonna say that again because this kind of encapsulates the, the theory I have when it comes to the, the content membership. So the wrong question is how exactly long should my post be? Here's the better question. The better question is, in a clear way, does this post help me connect with my clients, give value to my clients, or explain my value to my clients, it sells myself? So focus more on the message, not the word count. That's where it's more important. And if you can get both, if you can meet this magic 80 character length and accomplish this, the, the right question, fantastic. You win. You get, you get, you get a prize. <laughs> All right, so third question. This is another one that um, I hear in different variations. Uh, so the third wrong question is, well, everyone's talking about Snapchat, TikTok, whatever the most recent thing is. Uh, should I start posting there too? And these are people who get very nervous when they, I don't know if it's FOMO or what, but they're just like, they're afraid that if they don't post on every platform, they're going to be missing clients and connections where everyone else is. Um, but it's not the right question. It's not the right question. You don't want to just you don't want to just follow trends and follow shiny objects. You need to focus on your customer. So it's probably the wrong question to to ask. Because um, here's the thing: something that I always encourage people to do and it has worked well for me. For example, I've focused very heavily in Facebook, and that's my bread and butter. That's where I've invested, engaged, made connections, and I've invested really deeply um, and wholeheartedly into one platform, and it's paid off. I didn't need to be on Instagram. I don't need to be super duper active on LinkedIn. And for some people, that's where your clients are. That's great. But wherever you are, dig in. Don't spread yourself across like 14 platforms because you're losing energy. You won't be super engaged on all of them. You'll get exhausted. It's better to be good at a couple of things instead of chasing every trendy new platform, okay? And also, it takes time to see results from this stuff. You really need to be diligent in a single area 90 days is a pretty good marker. This isn't an overnight thing. It really isn't. It's about building relationships. Sales is about conversations and building relationships, right? So you have to dig into a place. You have to get known in a place for a while, right? So here's a better question. Instead of asking, should I be posting to the newest platform everyone's talking about? The better question is, which platform are my clients on? And am I comfortable being active and engaged on it? So this is, you need to focus more on the client than the trend. Um, so for example, my clients are on Facebook. I know this from experience and also if you look at data, you can see that um, certain age levels are on different platforms. You know, Snapchat and TikTok skew very, very young. So if you're trying to go after, you know, like middle-aged business owners, <laughs> Don't worry about trying to pick them up on Snapchat or TikTok. You may be able to somehow, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. But ideally, that's not the way you want to go. Look at who uses each platform and gravitate in the, you know, toward the one that 
they're on. Move toward your clients, not toward the trends, okay? And, um, but, you know, for example, if you love TikTok and you're posting on there all the time and you have a young client demographic for whatever your business is, fantastic. Go get them, Tiger. They're right there for you. I'm just saying, I don't want you chasing shiny objects. I want you to be able to build relationships and consistency and to focus on your client and not like a fear of missing out. So make sure that you're focusing on where your clients are and if you're comfortable being active and engaged on that platform. For example, um, Facebook, I live there. Some of my clients are perfectly comfortable there, but others are not as comfortable with it. They're like, well, I prefer LinkedIn. So their clients, their demographic is there. They're more comfortable on LinkedIn. Fantastic. That's perfect for you. Go there. No problem. Um, so that's that. And number four, I got five total. Uh, oh, this is an important one. Okay. <laughs> How many followers or page likes do I need to have? People get really caught up in this. And I don't know if you've heard the phrase vanity metrics. And so you can get statistics on everything on your on your, your, your followers, your view count, your engagement, your comments. Um, you can get statistics on everything. And you may have a really nice high statistic in X, Y, or Z, but just because you have a nice looking statistic doesn't mean it translates into business, into clients, into trust, things of that nature. So the number of followers and page likes is a vanity metric. It looks really good, but just because you have a lot of followers or page likes, doesn't mean you have a lot of active work. So let me go into this a little bit more. Um, it's quality over quantity. So, you know, for example, some people will do, you know, follow for follow. So they'll trade follows. But a lot of times it's people in your industry who probably aren't going to hire you, right? That's not, not going to be, you know, translate into business, right? Um, and then also some people even buy followers. I know I've seen pages like that. For example, I had one woman who hired me for a short time. She had 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. It's so many people following her page. And guess how much engagement she had? Zippo, nothing. She had nothing. Uh, like the only comments she had were from her VA because it was the same person posting every single time. Who cares if you have 10K likes if no one's buying from you? That's useless. Again, it's a vanity metric. It looks really good but it doesn't translate into work, into sales. The, the number isn't that important. Quality is the better, em, better engagement. So if you look at my page, if you look at my page, I have 251 people. There are lots of people who are way more likes than me, but I am busy. I am freaking busy. I'm not trading follow for follow because I want to focus on quality instead of quantity. I don't care how many people like my page, quite honestly. I'm focusing on other things that do help me a lot, but you will see something on my page, for example, that I focus on is I try to make sure that I get a lot of reviews. I don't care anything about my page count, but I know that my reviews matter a lot more. So you'll see that I have like, I think a dozen reviews now. I'm very conscious about focusing on that as a, a metric, as a strategy, as um, something to communicate my value within the page count. You don't need to worry about how many followers you have as long as you're engaged and have quality people. So again, here's the wrong question. How many followers or page likes do I need to succeed? Wrong question. It's not, it's not what you, you don't need to worry about it. The better question is, do I have an engaged audience on my page and profile? Are they commenting back on my posts? Are they asking questions? Are they reaching out to me for more questions about my work? And am I engaging with and helping them? Like I, I'm blessed with that. Again, I have 251 <laughs> likes on my page. That's not a whole lot compared to a lot of others, but I have wonderfully engaged clients. I have quality relationships with them and I am busy. Engagement is way more important than the number of followers that you have. So don't focus and lose sleep on the number of followers. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's being engaged with your audience that matters. So that's an important one that you can see I get worked up about that one. <laughs> Um, and then another one. So I also know people who get really hung up on um, making effects in Canva. Now Canva's fun. I love Canva, but kind of in the same way that posting at the exact right moment of the day, if there is one, isn't going to overcome a bad message. Posting, what was the other one I said? And then um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, posting the exact right word count 
is not going to be enough to overcome bad content or a bad message. And it's the same thing when it comes to Canva branding. It can do a lot to make you look way more professional. And if it's paired with like good branding, good message, you know, a good message, um, you know, engagement, things of that nature, perfect. It'll only help you, but it won't do anything if it's not paired with that more important core, right? I've seen gorgeous Facebook pages. They have consistent branding with beautiful, you know, always the same font and the logo on every picture and the colors, and it looks beautiful, but then there'll be nothing on the page, no one interacting, no one, no one, you know, you, you can tell that no one's checked in. There's like barely any likes, there's barely any comments. Usually the posts are too fluffy, so it's like, you know, the beautiful engagement, or this beautiful, um, I put the wrong thing here, okay. Fluffy, inspirational, that's the word, not engagement, inspirational. But this lovely inspirational quote that does nothing for you or for them. It looks pretty in Canva, but it doesn't lead to more business, right? And that's what we're trying to do. Um, or it's too self-centered. The feed may just all be, like I've seen like, like really nice quality, like, you know, the cartoon avatar video clips where it's just like, work with us, and here's a cartoon avatar of me holding paperwork as a tax accountant, and then no engagement. It looks beautiful, but the entire page was just work with me, work with me, work with me, work with me, buy from me, buy from me, and it's a commercial. It's a very pretty commercial, but you get tuned out that way <laughs> because it's not, it's not engaging with the client. It's not helping them. So again, I'm all for making things look professional. Again, you know, you know, you know you've seen me do the lead magnets and stuff like that. It does matter. It doesn't stand alone though. So the wrong question is, how many Canva effects should I add to my pictures? Do I need to add this color? Do I need to have this logo and this font? The better question is, does the image I'm using match with and visually communicate what I'm writing about? I'm gonna say that again because it's kind of long. So instead of how many Canva effects should I add to my picture, Instead, ask, does the image I'm using match with and visually communicate what I'm writing about? It's serving your message, right? So for example, in the content membership I do for my clients, I'll usually include uh, image suggestions. So say we're talking about, we're hitting the pain point of like being organized with your paperwork. Okay, great. So include a picture of someone who's struggling, you know, with a tall mountain of unorganized documents. It's matching to the message, it's serving to draw attention to the message, and it's visually communicating it. So not only are you hitting the message in the written content, you're hitting it in the visual content. They work together for you. And then you don't have to have something, you know, like with a bunch of branding and Canva on it. Um, hello? <laughs> you can, you know, get something from Unsplash. Unsplash is my favorite place to get photos because they're copyright free. You can use them whenever you want. Go to Unsplash, type in, you know, like pile of papers or receipts or tax accountant and pull up something that mass matches your message, that serves your message. This is how you're connecting to them. Um, it's more important that you have, that it comes along and serves your message because it won't stand alone. It has to, it has to come with it. Once again, it can make it better. It can make you look so professional, but beautiful posts that are fluffy or commercial and that's all they do. It's not going to overcome bad messaging. So instead, focus on the picture visually communicating the message you're trying to get across with your written content. Okay, so to sum up, what time of day should I be posting? Doesn't matter. It's more about, are my clients awake and can I engage with them? What's the exact word count my post should be? Doesn't matter. Am I connecting with giving value to or explaining my value to my customers in the content? Should I start posting to the newest platform? Doesn't matter. What, what platform are your clients on and are you comfortable interacting on there? What about how many followers do you need to succeed? Doesn't matter. Engagement's more important than number. Quality is more important than quantity. Do I have an engaged audience? Am I focusing on engaging with my audience rather than bumping up a vanity metric? And number five, how many camera effects should I add to my picture? Doesn't matter. Does the image serve the message? instead of replacing it, is it serving it? So again, focus on your customer, give them real help and get to know them and let them get to know you. Again, this is part of your sales cycle. You're trying to build this relationship of trust and it takes time and you need to get to know each other in that time. So 
And also be consistent. That's more important than posting, you know, at 2.37 one Thursday. It's better to post, you know, like throughout, you know, in roughly the right times, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? And then message will trump your technicalities. If you have a good message, it won't matter if you're too long for what it should be. It won't matter if you're posting a little too late in the day than what you should be. And it won't matter if you're, you don't have Canva branding, signature, logo, imprint on your image. Message is important. This is how you talk to your clients. So focus on your message. It trumps the technicalities of time of day, things of that nature. So those are the wrong questions I hear most of the time if you were asking those. I hope that helped you um, shift your focus. I really want you guys to have good tools and good strategies to be going forward, to not just put words out there and have no effect, but to actually enjoy success. So. Anyways, um, like usual, I have the content membership that's still available on two different levels now. The link's in the description. If you also want to work with me, I'm writing on a different way for you. I've got also the link in here, and I also have content strategy coaching if you want something that's more one-on-one -on -one and tailored to you and your work. Anyways, that is what I have for you today. Reach out if you have any questions. I hope this helped, and I will talk to you again next Tuesday, okay?